In this episode, we're gonna take a look at five different lavalier microphones in different classes so you can get a sense for how the different classes differ and what may work best for you in terms of your budget and the type of shooting that you're doing. Check this out. Now the goal of today's episode is really to give you a sense for the differences between the different types of mics out there. Not so much to pit each of them up against each other and kind of identify the ultimate mic. Every mic uh, fits a different situation and a different budget. And you can get great results, even with the budget mics, if you spend a little bit of time and figure out how to use them right. So let's go ahead and take a look at these different classes of mics and help you get a practical sense of which one of these may be best for your type of shooting. The five mics that we're going to look at are the Audio-Technica ATR3350, the Giant Squid Omni Mono Lavalier mic, the Rode Smart Lav, the HMN Sound Lavalier, and the Audio-Technica AT899. Now, as we look at each of these, we're going to give you a sense for what it sounds like for dialogue. Again, my goal here is, is and, and the type of experience I have, is mainly doing talking head and interview style videos. So that's really kind of the context from which I'm, I'm doing this comparison so that you know, and that's mainly what I do with these five mics, which I own and have used for a period of time. So first of all, I'll give you a chance to listen to them and hear what they sound like. Second of all, to do a quick sibilance test. And sibilance, if you're not aware, is the sound that uh, sometimes you can pick up in a mic when your talent says the letter S or the letter C. And it can be a really kind of grating noise if it, if it picks it up wrong. Um, we'll also look at the connector that the mic uses, the build quality of the mic, and also give you my overall impressions of how well the mic works and under what circumstances it works best. Now, as we run through each of these microphones, we have not done any audio processing on these except for normalizing. That is just bringing the levels up to the max so that you can hear um, what they sound like straight out of the recorder without any sort of uh, trickery in terms of <laughs> applying special effects or EQ or compression or anything else to each of the signals. Now our first mic here is the Audio-Technica ATR3350. This is our budget mic and this comes in at about $20 to $25 US. I've got links for all of these down below in the description. Now, the first thing that really kind of struck me with this mic is it seems really, really hyped in the mid-range. And specifically what I mean by that is in the one hertz, or sorry, one kilohertz, 1000 hertz range, same thing. Um, it seems to be really, really kind of uh, sensitive in that range. And so it's good for clarity, but it doesn't sound really awesome if you're trying to really improve the sound of your audio. So typically what I need to do, or what I do with this mic is that when I go into post-production, I'll use an EQ plugin and I will do a pretty severe cut, probably a six to nine decibel cut in the 1K range or 1000 hertz, 1, hertz range to really kind of get the, to bring out the richness a little bit more and to really mellow out that harsh mid-range. Here's our sibilance test. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Now here's another way in which this is really kind of a, a pretty good uh, option if you're looking for a budget option. Now one of the biggest things with using a lavalier mic is you're, you're you're improving the audio sound or the audio quality on your video by getting the mic much closer to your talent. It doesn't matter how awesome the mic is on your camera, it's just typically going to be too far away unless you're really right up on top of your talent. So almost any lavalier, including this one, the ATR3350, will provide you with better sound. And the way that this facilitates that is it actually has a six meter long cable. It's actually a little bit of a job to try and manage this thing. And so I roll it up on this uh, toilet paper roll. Um, and, but what that allows you to do is you can plug it directly into your camera. So you don't have to invest in a field recorder necessarily as you're getting started out. Uh, you can just take this and connect it directly to your camera and have your talent up to six meters away probably realistically about five meters away, which is a good working distance for most cases. The plug on this cable is a TRS 3.5 millimeter. It's made for going directly into your most cameras or most consumer level cameras, I should say, and also into small field recorders like the Zoom H1, Tascam DR05. Even the, H, the Zoom H4n has an input for this type of microphone. So it's not made for going into smartphones, so I need to make, be real clear about that. Um, we're gonna look at another mic in just a minute that does, but this one is made to go directly into your camera or into a small field recorder. Now, build quality on this mic is pretty decent, especially given the price, but 
There is a downside that really drives me crazy and, and is the main reason I don't use this mic very often and is, in fact, the reason why it took me longer to record this video than it would have otherwise. This requires a watch-style battery, an LR44 or something like that. Um, it's not typically something you can pick up just at the grocery store or drugstore um, locally. Um, and so that makes it a problem to work with. Furthermore, it doesn't have an indicator to show you that it's left in the on position. It's just a switch on this little battery pack here. And it does not have a battery uh, use indicator. It doesn't show you how much battery you have left. So you're really kind of on your own for that. And that makes it a little bit difficult to work with, if, especially if you're in a critical situation where you've got to get the shot right away. So, in fact, when I went to go shoot with this this time, uh, this battery was completely dead. I had evidently had accidentally left it in the on position and it was completely dead, so I had to go find another battery and stick it in there. So you'll definitely want to have some of these batteries on hand. When you order the mic, uh, go ahead and order some batteries along with it too, just to have those on hand. So if you're on a budget, this is actually a pretty good option. I think this is probably if you are just getting started, you want to improve the sound quality of your video, this is a great choice. Again, $20 to $25 US, you really can't beat it from that standpoint. You've got to, have, got to know some things about it. You may have to do some uh, EQ and post-processing, and you definitely need to have some batteries on hand and make sure that you're monitoring your audio so that you know if the battery is going bad because you'll just start to get more and more noise in the, in the audio as the battery starts to go bad. So not a bad choice, definitely a good bu budget option, but let's take a look at some of the others. Next up is the Giant Squid Omni Mono Lav Mic. This is actually, if you're on a tight budget and you have enough to invest in a field recorder, in fact, this, this microphone on are going to require a field recorder or a wireless system. So one of the two, and that means either you're gonna have to, a wireless system is pretty expensive, so they're usually gonna be somewhere in the $500 range. Um, and they'll often come with their own mics anyway, so maybe not the best choice, but it is possible. And then uh, the other option is really to record into a field recorder, like in this case, the Zoom H1 I'm going to be using for the next several microphone, for the next couple microphones. That really kind of ups the game quite a bit in terms of audio quality. And um, this one is a $40 US mic. The Zoom H1 is about a $100 US device for field recording and it works beautifully, and I hope you can tell by the sound here. It is hyped a little tiny bit in the one kilohertz range, like the ATR 3350 that we just looked at, but not nearly as much. So it's a much mellower, has much richer uh, low end to it, as far as I can tell. And uh, I really like using this mic because of those. Sibylin's Test, she sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Now this mic also has a 3.5 millimeter, TRS connector, again, made, it would work into your camera if it had a longer cable, but the cable is not that long. It's only about a, maybe a meter, maybe a meter and a half. So it's not really made to plug into your camera. So again, kind of a different class from the ATR3350 that we were looking at before. It does have a much more substantial cable. The build quality is pretty good, though it looks a little funny. It looks kind of homemade. It is actually, uh, they are handmade by uh, a fellow here in the US and uh, they do a pretty good job. Um, I really, again, I really like the sound of it. I think the build quality, it stood up for me quite nicely. I've never had a problem with it. it when I first pulled out of the package, I kind of thought, oh my gosh, is something broken here? Um, just because the alligator clip is sort of glued with this black glue directly to the barrel of the mic. Um, but again, most people aren't going to notice that when you're recording. So not a huge deal. So if you can't afford a field recorder, I really think that this is the cheapest way to get into what I would consider really good sounding dialogue audio for your video. So again, $40 US for the mic, about $100 for the field recorder, and sometimes they go on sale. Again, we'll have the links for both of those down below, but a great sound overall. Doesn't require a lot of uh, processing once you get into post, so pretty nice from that standpoint. Next up, we have the Rode SmartLav. This one is a little bit different than the others because it is actually made to record into your smartphone. And if you're using an iPhone, it uh, also has a specific app from Rode, which is actually a fantastic rap, uh, app <laughs> called the Rode Rec app. So I, uh, I really like that app. It works nicely with this. There are also any app that can record audio will also work with this, um, as long as you've got a smartphone with 3.5 millimeter input and a TRRS uh, connector, which again is most smartphones. 
Now, this one is not made to, to plug into a uh, dedicated field recorder like the Zoom H1. So again, it's really made for the convenience of using with your smartphone. Now, that's fantastic because if you've already got a smartphone, then you've already got a field recorder, which is great. However, um, smartphones are not really made to have pristine audio quality. They're made to have good enough audio quality, even with the uh, premium phones like the, the iPhone. You're going to be limited by the quality of the preamplifier in your smartphone. However, it is one of the most convenient options. I think you also sacrifice a little bit in terms of audio quality, um, as you can hear here. And let's do a little siblings test. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. So again, I think you, you really do sacrifice something in terms of audio quality, but you make up for it in convenience and having to buy less gear. If you don't already have a field recorder and you do have a smartphone, it is a pretty good option from that standpoint. The mic itself comes in at $60 US. Uh, build quality is pretty good. It comes with a, a foam wind cover, um, which doesn't necessarily do a whole lot for foam, but it does help cut down on the sibilance a little bit. And uh, it's just really convenient. So could be a really good choice as well. This is what it sounds like. Next up, the HMN Sound lavalier microphone. This is uh, made by a fellow over in Thailand. These come in at about US dollar 79. And I think the overall response on these is pretty nice. There is a little bit of a peak in the upper or higher frequencies that can have a tendency to pick up sibilance if someone, if your talent has a sibilant voice. Let's do our sibilance test here. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Now the build quality on this one is pretty nice. Um, I, I always feel a little bit more comfortable using this one in terms of build quality than the giant squid. Um, and the overall sound to it is pretty nice. It comes with a few extras, which are quite nice. The foam wind cover, which I like to use because again, it cuts down on that sibilance to some extent. It also comes with a metal grill, which I would typically avoid unless you have a, a talent with very dry voice, if you will. And it also comes with a plastic carrying case. Again, all, all nice touches. The connector is a 3.5 millimeter TRS connector, but you can also order this same mic, same price with different connectors for various wireless systems, inclu including the Sennheiser G3 system. So if you are gonna be using one of those systems, you've got some options here. The cable is relatively short. So again, it's made for connecting to a field recorder like the Zoom H1. It's not really made to, to connect directly to your camera unless you're working with your talent really close up to the camera, which I don't know why you'd be doing that. If you're doing self video selfies and you've got a wide angle lens, maybe that could be a case for you. But again, not really designed for that. And it'll really kind of sing once you start using a dedicated field recorder like this. Overall, I really like the HMN Sound Lovelier microphone. I use it quite a bit. Um, it, it's kind of a toss up for me as far as this one versus the giant squid. However, I do understand that they are working on a new formulation for this mic with a with, and kind of um, mellowing out that high frequency peak so that it will take care of some of the sibilance issues that you get with some talent. So I'm really interested to see how that one turns out and see how this one stacks up. If they can take care of that, I think this would be my, my probably the best option with a 3.5 millimeter connector in terms of lavalier microphones. Let's take a look at the Audio-Technica AT899. This is a, a very different mic than the others we've looked at so far. This is definitely moving up the scale a little bit. This is a professional, uh, kind of a professional level mic. It's professional from the sense that it uses an XLR cable. So it's not really made to record into the little field recorders like the Zoom H1. It requires a field recorder or an audio interface that has an XLR input and preamplifier. I find that the overall response on this mic is really very nice, very pleasing, pretty even. There is a little bit of a fall off in the higher frequencies, which is flattering for most people's voices. So it really works nicely under those circumstances. And one really nice thing about this mic as well is relative to the others, you don't tend to pick up as much noise when the cable moves around on the mic. And that can be pretty important depending on the types of shooting that you're doing. A little, uh, a little sibilance test here for you. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. The XLR battery pack takes a AA battery to power the mic. And then on the other side, you have an XLR cable. An XLR cable is a balanced cable, a professional grade cable that allows you to connect the microphone to a field recorder or audio interface or a wireless transmitter, depending on what you're going to be hooking it up to. That's where this mic becomes a lot more expensive. So while the price on this mic is $200 US, it also requires a much higher um, 
level of audio recording device or wireless transmitter to get the signal to the place where you need it, whether that be a field recorder, an audio interface directly into a computer, or a wireless transmitter that sends it to your camera. The build quality on this mic is really top notch. Um, I found everything, the fit and finish is fantastic. The durability seems great. I've been using it for a couple, well, probably about a year and a half now. Um, it comes with a lot of accessories, including foam, wind cover, uh, more clips than I've ever seen with any other mic um, of various types. It's interchangeable, so you can, you can flip the clip over and use it on different, uh, you know, mounting it to different types of clothing. It works very beautifully. And uh, I think in terms of build quality, top notch. Really like this mic. The overall sound is fantastic as long as it's used on the outer portion of your Talon's clothes. Once you get it underneath their clothes to, to conceal it, it starts to get a little bit muffled, but nothing that can't be fixed in post-processing. So it, that's going to be a higher maintenance workflow if you do need to do that. Um, but if you're just going to put it on the outside of the clothing, fantastic overall. Now really there are a couple of downsides to this mic. It's a little higher maintenance, obviously. Um, there's a lot of cables involved here, um, and it requires a much more expensive field recorder. So if budget is really your concern, then this is probably not the best mic for you. But if pristine audio quality is your biggest concern, this may be a much better choice for you. I hope that was helpful for you in terms of just giving you sort of a baseline and comparison of the different types of lavalier microphones. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. We'll get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.